So what is our pre-analytics? And I define that word as all of the factors and steps that precede a specimen analysis. There are many people and many steps in this process that may artifactually alter the molecules, the analytes inside the specimen, and these altered analytes in turn alter test results. And there may be two types of alteration in the specimens. There may be an alteration of molecular content because when biopsies or resection specimens come out of or off of the patient, they are viable. They are living tissue and they are reactive to biologic stresses to which they are subjected, which are industrial strength. They are, uh, they are kinds of stresses that they would never experience as an integral part of your anatomy. And these biologic stresses alter the entire molecular composition of the specimen. And then there's the alteration caused by a breakdown of molecular integrity. There's degradation of molecules as time goes by or as temperatures um, alter uh, or, or other environmental factors um, affect the specimen. So in fact, the, the control over the pre-analytics period is essential if we are going to get the right answer from molecular analysis of patient specimens. And this control requires rigorous, real-time, upfront management. Um, you, you can't go back and fix a specimen once it has been subjected to, uh, to factors that skew its molecular content. And as opposed to popular um, beliefs, Technology will not fix a bad specimen. At a conference that I once gave on this topic, I actually had the CMO of Illumina stand up and, and say that in front of an audience. This is not widely known. People have great faith in the ability of technologies to fix these kinds of artifactual alterations. It's a huge problem in precision medicine. Because in this age of precision medicine, patient management decisions are based largely, if not solely, on molecular analysis data from patient specimens. We know this uh, as companion diagnostic. So a test that analyzes a molecular target for a targeted therapy, that test alone determines whether or not a patient will or will not get a potentially life-saving therapy. So I start this lecture by reviewing some of the basic tenets of precision medicine, things in which we all believe. Number one is that patients should get the right answers from medical tests. Um, that high quality test results depend on high quality analytes from high quality specimens. The basis for what we do is quality. The control of specimen quality involves every step in the supply chain and every person in the chain of custody. It is impossible to build precision medicine on a foundation of widespread imprecision related to patient specimens. The effect of pre-analytics on patient specimens affects clinical outcomes because of its effect on clinical treatment decisions, but it also affects research outcomes. These are the same specimens from the same patients that are used for analysis in translational research, uh, if the patient goes on to a clinical trial, uh, they are used to investigate uh, the results of the trial as to why the, the treatment worked or why it did not work. They are used in discovery research. These same specimens expand our knowledge of human biology and human pathobiology. 
Their effects on clinical outcomes um, are obvious. They have the potential for incorrect diagnosis um, as well as the potential for incorrect treatment, but their effects on research outcomes are now um, horrifyingly obvious. They have the potential for creating irreproducible results, variations in mutation data, variations in gene expression data, misinterpretation of artifacts as biomarkers. And in fact, we are facing one of the biggest crises in biomedicine ever before in history, because it's been shown recently that only about 30% of all published biomedical research data can be reproduced. This has uh, become known as the irreproducibility crisis. There are now two huge irreproducibility um, studies going on, one funded by the federal government and, and commandeered by the uh, National Institutes of Health and the other in the private sector to see exactly how broad and deep this problem is. But the answer is not pretty. And in, in my view, much of the problem goes back to this problem, this fundamental problem of not knowing the provenance or the quality of the human biospecimens used in biomedical research. And this problem is getting ever more complex because we are moving in pathology from uni-analyte tests to multi-analyte tests to omics analyses. If we're going to look at a species of biomolecules, we now have the ability to look at every member of that species in the same specimen. And it's going even further beyond omics to pathway analysis where we're looking at the interactions between these classes of biomolecules and how they signal cell behavior. So this is becoming ever more complex and the bar for biospecimen quality therefore is going through the roof.